<laughs> hey everybody, welcome to the Reverend and the Reverend Beta Show, our two best buds interviewing people that we have no business talking to, and maybe you don't either, according to some of our promos. I'm Lucas Pinkert, an actual <laughs> reverend, and here with me, as always, is a man who looks at his left hand when he's playing guitar so much the glasses fall off the bridge of his nose. It's I had to Dan buy, Whip Gibson. I had to buy new glasses. They're on. They're in the mail. Because of your... Yeah, because they're so old that I look down so much on play guitar, they just start falling. So I need to get a new pair. I don't know if I should have started this. I do think that that's something, though, that happens with age for us, is that the glasses just slowly start to creep down the yeah. nose. And you look a lot like your dad right yeah. now. The glasses come down, <laughs> but dad strength is in. Yeah, so, da- so t- talk to me about dad strength, because we've had these conversations a lot. Yes, yeah. Yep. Uh, I love the theory of dad strength. That yeah. W- what is the theory? Because okay, so, so the theories are that there's multiple levels of strength for men, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there are, maybe if you drink Bud Light, you don't get all of these, but if you don't, then you would have your regular strength that just comes from being a man, mm-hmm. right? What's your testosterone or, or, or from kicks being, in? Or from being a boy, yeah. right? And then you get your adolescent strength. Well, at 25, you get man strength, and and this is though we give it like these joking names. This is a scientifically proven thing that at 25 you enter into your prime muscle building years where you can build the majority of your strength and agility and all that stuff. And that really lasts from like 25 to 35. You can continue to build muscle all the way to 45. But there's this other thing that happens somewhere in the midst of that that is very very specific to the group of people that decide to follow the cultural mandate and procreate, and that is dad, dad strength. strength. And dad strength That's comes what I have from right the now. moment you have a child that like something happens. And and I think it's a twofold thing. I think one, that it happens because you have a protective instinct that kicks in. They're mm-hmm. like, all right, now I have a family and it's time for me to up my game. And the second thing that happens is especially for dads that have boys, is that it's proportional to however strong your son gets to a certain point so that you always have the ability to to kick his butt if he gets out of line and (laughs) sass his mom too much. Yep, that happened to me. Yeah, so... I remember getting shoved in the kitchen one time. Oh, man. I was Okay, so tell me your story. I'll tell you mine, and then we can talk about the dad strength stuff. I don't remember what I did. I just Uh remember my mom and I were in the middle of... You know, an argument, an argument. Yep. And my dad was tired of it and he was tired of me sassing my mom. Oh, man. so he walked up and shoved me and I stopped. Yeah. And it was just dead quiet in the kitchen, of course, because dad intervened yep. and dad intervened with some, you know, some rightfully earned physical force. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I was probably. There's, there's not a lot of things dads have to do with this good no, shove. No, that, that speaks volumes. I was probably 15 or 16. And being the oldest, like I decided, you know what? Mom doesn't know what she's talking about. And I'm going to impose my will into into this thing because I had like something dumb that I wanted to go do. And what happened was I found myself, my arm being grabbed and I was thrown outside and told that if I believe that I'm a man now Mm. and can talk to my mom like that, then I will face the same consequences as any other man who decided they should talk to my mom like that. And so I had a decision to make, which was either go in and apologize or fight my dad. (laughs) And I decided it would be of my best interest to grovel. (laughs) And so that's exactly what happened. Yep. Yep, and if you've watched our our dad episode from a couple of years ago, like there there is, and he doesn't listen because no nobody in our family listens to this <laughs> no. except for your mom to see how she's going to be incarcerated each week. So <laughs> Every, all the shenanigans there, yeah, she's not up to. Yeah, so the <laughs> there is this this thing in my family because uh, my dad's, but neither one of us are real tall guys. Like I'm I'm five eight, uh, dad's like around five six, but like something happens when he gets angry. Mm-hmm. That like and he just they, and they're way bigger, dude. There are stages of this. It's not you know how Gandalf. When it's he's, not even when he's like at, okay. So this is kind of it, right? Like the room Bilbo. starts to like the light starts to dim around him, and it's like all sources Frodo of energy Bans! are or being Bilbo, like me. pushed, Sorry. pushed into. That's the second bad reference you make in the show. Or it's just kind of like being pushed into him, and then you just you realize all of the energy in the room is about to come at you in a force that you just mm-hmm. can't dad strength armed yeah. and he doesn't he he's not he doesn't yell and he's not like 
he he was never one of those dads that and still isn't that was like super physically imposing or anything like that but just all of a sudden like you could see it start to happen you're like oh this is gonna oh, no. go really Eject. poorly Eject. yeah like Abort. I'm, I'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry, yeah. sorry and uh and he would just be he would very calmly be like i think we're done with this conversation and i'd be like eh, yeah that's cool correct can you turn the lights back on <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um, so so but dad, that, but dad that, strength. That, that is dad strength but dad strength is also applicable in other areas as you found out this weekend yeah, where where my wife had said that our bed had broken yeah and that she's been sleeping on a slope for the last day or two yeah and that she wanted it fixed and i you know have just gotten home from all week of working and i went yep. what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna go ahead and fix this so you can sleep and she said, how are you going to fix it? And I walked in, grabbed with one hand the mattress, threw it out of the way, <laughs> lifted the bed up, shoved a whole bunch of pillows underneath it and let it go. And it fixed it. Yeah. And <laughs> put it back. And of course, she's staring at me going, you didn't fix it. And I said, look at it. Yeah. She Lay said, down. She said, you Nick Millard it. You Nick Millard fix it, which is a reference to New Girl, if anyone's ever seen that, how he, how he fixes everything with yeah. just, if there's a pipe that's not working, he bangs it for a while and then it, it starts working again. Yeah, for sure. So I Nick Millard it, I agree, that's, but, uh, uh, but she was irritated and impressed with my show of strength. Oh, for sure. I'm, I'm trying to think of who it was we had on the show recently. Um, it may have been, it may have been the Bluesman Vintage guys, but I'm, I'm not for sure where they were talking about like how how much it is to do something, right? That like you could have somebody who's, you know, the, the old story was that a guy needed his boat fixed and he had all these repairmen who looked at it. He looked at it for hours and hours and hours and like couldn't get it fixed. And this guy comes out and basically like had a wrench and like tapped on this thing and then the boat starts. And he's like, that'll be yep. $4,000. That like, happens to me all how? the time. How? That was five minutes. And he goes, okay, yeah, you're paying $100 for, for the five minutes. He's like, and then you're paying three hundred nine thousand dollars for the twenty years worth of expertise that I've put in this to know where to hit that boat with this wrench. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. There you go. So I Nick Millered it, but uh, I think my wife was impressed and irritated with an excessive show of dad strength that she doesn't have. Which, no. Which was I think the, and I think cannot, the irritation was largely a, attain. I can't believe you just did that in ten seconds. Yeah. Well, that's what happens. Also, that's why they married us is yeah. because we have the ability sometimes, to do this kind of sometimes stuff. Sometimes you just need some brute strength. Am I right, ladies? I'm going to let that one just die on the I think there's a chorus of, yep, (laughs) going on. (laughs) You think Tina's just saying, yes, Dan, that's exactly right. Sometimes we need brute strength. Yeah. Well, uh, today on the show, we are interviewing Grant McFarland (laughs) from Galactic (laughs) Empire. If you don't know about Galactic Empire, they are a prog rock, metalcore, heavy metal band that covers exclusively... Uh, Star Wars songs. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely incredible. It's like listening to my childhood in the way I would want to hear it as an adult. Yeah, and it's, it's that's a, a good way to say it. It's amazing. There, it is all of the stuff from the first three films uh, reimagined in a, the a setting music of, like, of our basically childhood, like a five, with the the prog rock that we're listening to right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, with with the, uh, the with the taste core, of our the, adultness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so not only do do the guys do that, but they also dress up in character as a lot of these characters from Star Wars. Grant talks to us about the origins of the band, how it got started, why it got started, and the success that they've seen on YouTube, how their record label actually came to them for their latest album, Special Edition, which is out now, came out on May the 4th, and uh, talks a little bit about what it's like touring as a character that you created from one of your greatest childhood fandoms and the reception that they get at a metal show that's designed for all ages and generations. It's a really cool, very fun interview with Grant and our very first one as members of the officially announced Christian oh, Nerd CNHQ. HQ, which is such a cool thing. If you haven't checked out CNHQ, make sure that you do it. We've got uh, not just a list of incredible podcasters with ourselves, Tatooine Sons, Christian Nerds Unite. The Speaking Nerdy Podcast with your host, Mr. Mike Schilling. And my good friend and compadre, Mr. Ricky Poe. Every Friday, Mike and I talk about nerdy fandoms, the latest nerdy news, and Mike tries to make me laugh by sharing stupid news that often starts with a Florida man. We're glad to be part of the Christian Nerd HQ Podcast Network. You can catch us on all of your favorite podcast apps or on YouTube at youtube.com slash speaking nerdy. Be sure to check out speakingnerdy.com for even more great content from us.
fangirling over Jesus and a list that's going to continue to grow over the course of the next few months. But on top of that, uh, if you go check out our Instagram, our YouTube pages, one of the things that you'll see is that we're doing some updates on nerdy news and some things like that from a Christian worldview and perspective. It's unique. It's fun. And we think that you guys will really enjoy it. And without any further ado... Our board ready. Sweet clean airwaves today. Big whip. Yep. It is. Uh, I guess the founding member and really the the force behind my favorite Star Wars iteration, and that is the Galactic Empire. It's a heavy metal band that covers all of John Williams' greatest hits. It's a new way to do the familiar, and my favorite way to listen to Star Wars. What's going on, Grant? How are you, man? I'm great. How are you guys? We are doing fantastic. Yeah, we're doing great too. Lu- Lucas just recently introduced me to you guys, the to the, the Galactic Empire. He's got a, a very intense uh, focus on metal subgenres. Subgenre, yeah, yeah, perfect. perfect yeah, yeah, to say. yeah. There's a uh, there's Alestorm, Alestorm, Glory Hammer, all all and of those. Kinda... Number one on the list, Galactic Empire, which which I think scratches several itches. Of oh, the for sure. Rock and roll, good music, excellent musicianship, and Star Wars. Is is that wow. what is that what got you into doing this? Well, that's awesome. Thank you for the nice words there. Uh, honestly, this whole thing was not really planned in any capacity. Uh, in like 2012 or 2013, I uh, made a cover of the Imperial March. It was like a drum playthrough video with the London Symphony Orchestra in the background. And uh, about a year or two later, I, after that sat on YouTube for a while, I always kind of had in the back of my mind, like, hey, it'd be cool to add guitar to this. And one day I did and showed it to my studio uh, business partner, Carson. And he was like, this is really sick. You should do more of these. So we ended up doing like an entire album by the time we realized how fun it was. And then we were like, hey, we should do a music video. And then we were like, hey, if we're going to do a music video, You should probably be in costume, right? Uh, So we got a bunch of costumes on Amazon. And then there were all the bad guys. And we're like, well, I mean, this is a metal band. We're all bad guys. Like, let's just call it Galactic Empire. Um, And the music video was done. And uh, we were going to release it. But I think we decided to wait two to three weeks because The Force Awakens was about to come out in theaters. And we were like, well, let's just wait and put it out that day. And uh, we did, and then it went viral that day, and kind of the rest is history. Yeah, your stuff is, I mean, blown up, I think, is a way to put it lightly. Yeah, when we blew up, it was a couple hundred thousand views. Yeah. Yeah, You know, I I watched, I don't remember which one it was. It was the the Imperial March, I believe, has 15 million right now on on YouTube. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't checked it recently. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a ton. So uh, what, I don't know, what character are you? Because of all of the videos I've seen online, it's... Like you said, you're in. You're fully decked out. There's Vader. There's a uh, Imperial. What do they call them? The Imperial Guard. Mm-hmm. The red one. Yep. You got an Imperial Guard. There's a Gerd. A, a Thai pilot. Yeah, the Gerd. <laughs> yeah, it's my uh, my Canadian coming out. So yeah. So what what character are you in? Like he how did this get created? Reflux. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> uh, so there's been a couple different iterations of characters in the band. Uh, when we first started the band. We had these like rubies costumes that we got uh, off of Amazon, and it was like Darth Vader and a stormtrooper, a shadow trooper. Uh, there was the Imperial Guard and uh, uh, Boba Fett, and that was what we used for the original music video. But then when we went to play live, we realized that we didn't want to ruffle any feathers or cause trouble with any legal stuff, so. Well, I should also say it was almost impossible to play in those costumes. Yeah. Uh, So we kind of realized that we needed a version of costumes that was playable for live, uh, but then also, you know, didn't cause any legal troubles. So we created like these Walmart brand version looking characters that were like, you knew it was Darth Vader, but we called him Dark Vader. Um, (laughs) Right. And uh, that way we felt like we could like safely, you know, by like parody law and everything, sort of do our own thing. You know, Spaceballs had dark helmets, so we can have Dark Vader. That's exactly uh, what I was thinking. So that, that, we that did that. Yeah. That was like Thumb our Wars. second. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. 
Oh no, I was just saying, yeah, yeah, the parody space law. Boat. Yeah, you, th- thumb wars. Very Mel Brooksian thinking, is yeah. what your characters looked like during one iteration. Yeah, yeah. So that was like the second phase, um, and then now with this new record that just came out, uh, our record label, who's actually like really into this whole thing, and and actually asked us to be a band again. So they they like hit us up uh, to make a record, and uh, they've been really awesome. But they've had a lot of great ideas, and one of them was, hey, let's like. Let's let's re you know shift our focus and rebrand a little bit. Maybe try something new. And uh, so we created our own brand new characters from scratch. Uh, so you know this time we're not really uh, relying so heavily on nostalgia in terms of like, hey, look, it's Darth Vader on stage. You know, it's like, or you know, hey, here's like a cheap like knockoff Darth Vader on stage. It's like, no, these are like our own creations. Like if we wanted to make our own characters and they feel like they belong in the star wars universe but it's like imagine like you made a new movie and you had like an art department come up with like new characters and uh it's it's sort of like our own like step into that and i think it's kind of cool because it's creatively a little more fulfilling to have our own thing uh so that's that's what we have now uh and we have five new characters uh for the band that's awesome yeah Dude, I would... when when did you start with the new characters is this a, is this a pretty new thing is it this tour? Uh, yes. Uh, just so on the album cover uh, and the first music video that we released for The Mandalorian, uh, that's where you can see the new characters. Which, by the way, your original question was, who am I? I was originally Boba Fett uh, right. and then Boba Set, And now the third iteration of the character, he's still a Mandalorian bounty drummer, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he's called Blast Beat now. Oh, cool. nice! But which is uh, which is something that happens quite often well, in the songs, particularly the 20th century Fox fanfare at the beginning. Which I gotta say that the new album um, it just dropped, uh, I believe, on May the fourth, or right there, right there around that time. Um, I had you're still Canadian right now, right? There, yeah, around right there that around time. that time. Eh? So <laughs> as I was looking at you know, because I, I keep up with y'all stuff, I watch your stuff on Instagram, um, and as the singles were dropping, your song list, if you went to go like pre-select the album, like, hey, I want this the day that it, that it comes out, or you could pre-order it, you get to see the entire song list for everything that's coming out. Now, this album is actually on vinyl as well as if you were to get it on Apple Music, it's on their new Lossless stuff, which is fun. It's so much better than listening to the old compressed MP3s, especially when it comes to you know the, the type of things that you're doing where it's very technical drum. And so... I'll pause. Danley and I started this podcast a couple of years ago, but we met each other because we were playing together in a band. He's a guitar player. I'm a bassist. So in his mind, nice. I'm semi-useless. Uh, but as he, f- for as the he record, told me earlier, <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> for, for the record, I am not worthy. Okay. Uh, you guys are way better musicians. The musicianship uh, that you guys have is in, it's, is insane. It's unbelievable. Which leads me to my question, but you finish yours first. Yeah. So when... When you're getting ready to drop something like this, I think it's really, really interesting that you said that the record label reached out to y'all to do an album. Yeah, how do you swing swing that? Yeah, for sure, right? Because like when when we were going through, and we had a couple of smaller record deals, like we're begging to get studio time to put our stuff out after they told us how great we were and we signed on the dotted line. That's not your experience at all, it sounds like, with this. They're like, hey, will you guys please make an album? Yeah. Who does that um, happen to other than Mariah Carey? Yeah, I guess we just lucked out in this particular case. Uh, our our AR from the label, uh, Kahil Banji, he's said he's always been a big fan of the band. I think at one point I had reached out to him years ago, uh, but you know for whatever reason we uh, decided not to to work together at that time. But uh, you know he had always, you know we, we've communicated a little since then, and and you know stayed in touch and. Uh, he was a fan of the band and we hadn't done anything since, you know, COVID and it had been a couple of years and he just kind of hit me up out of the blue and was like, Hey, uh, is Galactic Empire like doing anything? Did you think about doing anything? And, uh, it spawned a whole like long conversation on the phone and we ended up talking a couple times and just sort of like brainstormed a bunch of ideas. You know, he's, he's just an idea guy. He's very creative, uh, and very involved, which, uh, a lot of the time when you work, you know, with a company like a record label, uh, they tend to focus more on like the the business side of things and leave the creative to the band. 
or sometimes you'll get a record label who will try to step in and do too much of the creative and not let the band you know do what they want to do uh, i'm sure people have always you know talked about stories where you know the label is basically telling the band how to be a band uh but this is kind of this perfect middle ground where uh you know it's a very collaborative process back and forth and he's just got a lot of ideas and uh it's just very invested in the band and excited about it and uh, it's been a great working relationship it's definitely yeah we're very happy that's awesome how, how yeah. did you, how did you guys get the rights to these incredible songs that yeah this is I, what i, I really want to know i imagine it wasn't you know, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll shut up. <laughs> I think yeah, because it's not like been... an overnight, like, oh, we're just going to play Star Wars songs yeah. and put them I out I want to do the Cantina song. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's got to be more to it than that if you're making profits. Uh, yeah, so actually, uh, the hard part of all of this, there's there's sort of two different challenges that you you need to overcome in this particular case of this band. The one is... Uh, the costumes, obviously, which we sort of already went over. Right. Um, uh, the, those characters belong to Disney and Lucasfilm. So, uh, you know, you can't really go around making money with their intellectual property or their characters. Uh, like, if you sell tickets to a Darth Vader show, of, if you sell, you know, $2 million of, of, you know, product with the name Darth Vader on it, Disney's going to come knocking, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. you can get a license, but they're not cheap. And, uh, uh, we uh, just have always done the best to not ruffle any feathers and not upset anyone. So that 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 side of things, you know, we just decided to use our own characters now, and we're just kind of doing our own thing. Then there's the music, like you mentioned. Uh, with the music, it's actually fairly simple, um, as long as you fill out the proper paperwork, so to say. Um, if you acquire the mechanical license to any song, I mean, like. Take Metallica, for example, mm -hmm. historically, you know, protective over. Oh, um, oh, yeah. We grew up in the Napster phase. The music. Yeah. yeah. Like the whole Napster thing and all that. Um, you you could cover a Metallica song right now if you, you know, just go to the Harry Fox agency or one of the other, you know, like there, there are places that you can go where you fill out the paperwork and you acquire the mechanical license and then. You know, it's I don't know what the figure is, if it's like 10 cents on the dollar or whatever, but it the the royalty goes back to the publishing company that owns the music gotcha. and you've done your homework. So as long as you fill out the paperwork correctly and uh, you have that system in place that's paying out that royalty, you, you can sell a cover of a piece of music. Hmm. That's, do you think, and I'll just say this because you brought Metallica up and I think that you're probably like in our, our age range. That um, that S the album Saint Anger was to spite all of us because we downloaded their stuff off Napster. That that's why Metallica made that record. That's a good theory. I never heard that one actually. <laughs> I guess that's why the the snare drum was like retribution or something. Yeah, oh, man. that's exactly right. It's brutal. It was so so bad. I, I I do like. I've seen several live shows where James will come out. And he'll ask, "Does anyone like Saint Anger?" And the crowd just hisses. Just yeah, crickets. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. But I was gonna, where was I going to go with this? I don't, I don't know. Oh, live shows. Yes. So I, I am curious. You guys just did a live show last night. Yep. It was live on Instagram. You yeah. can watch it on Instagram, which is pretty cool. What is the energy like with not only playing music that I'm sure that the audience loves, but dressed up? You know, you guys are putting on a visual and audio show. So what's the energy like in the in that room? We can take last night as a, as a good example. Yeah, I mean, last night was super fun. Uh, it's uh, it's always a blast. I, I have a great time, you know, playing the shows. Uh, and yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just a, a lot of fun for the band. It's a lot of fun for the audience. We often will get audience showing up in costume. Uh, last That's night cool. we had a uh, bunch of guys and uh, and uh, that there was like a whole lightsaber guild that showed up in costume oh, and wow. uh, we had them doing uh, duels on stage awesome. uh, <laughs> while we were playing. Uh, we'd throw out, you know, beach balls during the Cantina Band song and force choke someone on stage and <laughs> fire a Death Star laser. And, and it's just a bunch of wacky, ridiculous, weird fun. And uh, everyone just has a blast. And the music is just nostalgic, I think, for everyone yeah. in the room because it's you know, these pieces that everyone's known for so long. Uh, so 
it's just uh, it's just really fun. And last night specifically was really fun because uh, we performed a three song encore with Daryl McDaniels of Run DMC. Oh. I I saw that on the Instagram it was so cool. Yeah, he is the man. Such a cool dude. Uh, that was a blast. And honestly, I don't even know how we were lucky enough to you know have that opportunity. But uh, very very cool. Um, yeah, that that was a blast. So yeah, I was gonna ask, what, like, how did that happen? Was that yeah. like an was he at the show and, and, or and has what he like songs heard were of y'all? Yeah, like were they were they Run DMC songs? We did two Run DMC songs. We played Tricky and Walk This Way. It's so uh, sick. And then also a new song of Daryl's of uh, his solo uh, project that he has, um, a song called Metal Man. That's. That's crazy. So yeah, it sounds like a pretty legendary night. Yeah, for sure. And especially like a way to kick off a, a tour. You said you guys are doing kind of like a Midwestern tour right now. Like I, I can't imagine a better encore than that. Like, oh, hey, you thought we were great. Now we're going to bring on a rock and roll Hall of Famer to come and to help close out the show. Like that's, that's so wild. Yeah, he's definitely legendary. We are honored to, to get to do that with him for sure. Uh, I think I answered only one of your questions there. I'm trying to remember what the second one was. There was a lot. That's all right. We're we just, yeah. Yeah, that's we, the way our yeah, show yeah, works. Yeah, we tend to sandwich okay. a whole bunch of stuff together. We got really excited about music and Galactic yeah, I, yeah, Empire. I, I, and I then just, you said Run DMC and our little squirrel brains were like, oh, nope, this is the new place we're going now. So, yeah. okay. So you said you you don't really know like how that came about. Like it had to have been an organic thing. Did he reach out to you guys and say, hey, I see you're going to be in town? Or do y'all just like know him adjacently? Because you run a studio. In, uh, in what, like the Pennsylvania area, yeah? Yeah, uh, I'm there now. It's uh, We have a studio called Atrium Audio. We're located in the Rock Lidditz campus. Uh, this this campus is kind of this real estate sort of empire built by the partnership of Claire Global and Tate Towers. They do, like, all the sound, lighting, and staging and everything for all the biggest touring acts in the world. So, like... Yeah. You know, you see like Taylor Swift, for example, you know, like they they do her stuff or like The Weeknd. Uh, and they've been doing this since like the 60s. So like when Yes started, you know, that's when Tate actually, Tate started, I think, tour managing them, like before he even built the first like Tate Tower for them. It was like lighting and stuff. But oh, wow. These guys have been around for basically the entire, the entirety of, of the rock industry. And uh so yeah, we're very lucky to be here on campus and there's just a lot of different companies on campus that facilitate different parts of the live industry. There's a marketing company on campus that we work with called Media Twist. Uh, Chris and Amy Kurtz run that. They're great friends of ours. They worked really closely with us on this particular show, uh, but just in the, with the band in general. Uh, just a great team. Yeah, they they hooked us up with uh, DMC. They were working with him on some other project and decided that it would be a great fit and they were right. It was an wacky weird ridiculous awesome thing that happened and i feel like we are not worthy uh he's just a legend and it was we felt honored to be you know on stage with him so very cool thing that happened that's awesome where, where are you guys playing next when you're uh you're continuing this how, how, let me ask it this way how many stops are you doing on the on the tour uh, so the Midwest tour that you guys mentioned, that one's in August. Um, right now we're just doing a short three day run. Uh, so we did a Twitch stream on May 4th. We played in Lidditz, Pennsylvania last night, uh, Philadelphia tonight. And on Sunday night, it's like in the Harrisburg area of Pennsylvania. So kind of like just a re little regional run just to kind of get our feet wet into playing shows again, since the band hasn't played for like four years. Wow. So do do you have the same lineup of, uh, you know, you guys have been apart for a while and then the, the record company said they we want to do a new album. Uh, is it the same group of guys that you are all, all friends or do you have, you know, having a studio, you have a, you have access to a lot of studio musicians. Is it kind of a, a, a recurring group or you just go with the band the has been somewhat of a revolving door over the years. Uh, the lineup now is different. Um, just for various reasons, some guys had to go play in other bands and do other things. Um, you know, Galactic wasn't very active. Uh, there was like some crazy thing that, uh, you know, stopped everything in the world for a while. I don't know if you heard about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, but, we're uh, familiar. <laughs> it took us a while to get back into it. And uh, now we're finally there. But, you know, some other people had some other endeavors and things. Um, and uh, yeah, but 
it's been it's been great that's one of the cool things about the band is you know that uh it doesn't really matter who's playing as long as it sounds great because to the audience it feels the same I was going to say, that's got to be one of the cool things about having characters is that you can kind of make things interchangeable without too much consternation. I mean, if there's a lineup that changes in a, you know, if, for instance, if Mark Tremonti were to lead Alter Bridge, and I'm saying that because I know they're one of your favorites. And we just talked about him. Yeah. Then the the entire Alter Bridge fandom would be like shaken up mm-hmm. and up and I was like, what's happening and whatever. And he was, if he just said, well, I have another endeavor, everybody's going to be like, no, you don't. Like this, this is it. But the the characters kind of a, allow you allow you to do that a little bit. And I wanted, I do want to talk about the characters. So you are, um, give me your your new character's name again because I loved it. It was awesome. Blast beat. Okay, uh, plays the drums. So um, what are what are the other characters? I know you got a poster over there that shows us what some of y'all's new characters are. Can you kind of walk yeah. us through who some of the new characters are? Sure. Uh, so this is like this. Uh, poster that looks sick yeah it's a ball album cover (laughs) yeah that is bussin (laughs) yes simon carpenter uh uk artist he's incredible we've been working with him a long time huge fans of his work uh yeah he he did this piece um so yeah right here we have blast beat right uh with a dark saber-ish looking thing which i like uh those are drumsticks yeah yeah it's cool yeah uh and then uh over here we have od66 on bass nice is, uh, is he a droid? He's like um, some kind of amalgamation of a Death Trooper and Ant Man, and uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, he's just uh, he's sort of his own creation, but he's sort of like a like an infantry kind of guy. Yeah. Um, uh, here we've got Doom Riff on guitar. Doom Riff. Oh, That's good name. Such a good name. Uh, he plays the rhythm guitar. Uh, this is Darth Brooks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, with he the plays hat. guitar. That's guitar. With, genius. With a matching cowboy hat. Very yep. good. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was hard to see him on Instagram. He looked a little like Cad Bane-esque. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but Darth Brooks Yeah, he's like a space better. cowboy, but, yep. um, I don't know. You know, he's got like, he's like this droid half droid half human he's got like body parts that are like modified and stuff darth um, brooks yeah that's uh, incredible and then we have lord sick on lee guitar here another good name that's i, I am that's curious so cool. like in the, in the music videos you guys are wearing gloves clearly you're not able to play the instruments with that so live do you do you struggle at all with you know we're a little bit out of out of character with with regular hands and then full you know, out, uh, regalia rig. Yeah. Yeah. In the music videos, uh, we try to, um, you know, just put the best presentation on as possible. And, you know, we've definitely had a lot of people, you know, comment on that. And it's like, well, I mean, it's a music video. Yeah. Like live, we want to show off real musicianship and real playing. Like the guys are playing their instruments. So of course you can't play guitar at that level of proficiency with gloves on. Of course not. Uh, So we just don't wear gloves live. Um, We've tried to find gloves that uh, That's are what even I made know. for playing guitar. Uh, they just uh, nothing feels as good as your hand on the strings. Mm-hmm. So uh, we don't want to, you know, uh, handicap our players too much. I mean, the costumes and the helmets are already enough. Uh, but yeah, we just play without gloves. Well, the fact that you guys can play at that level in, mm-hmm. I mean. <laughs> it's pretty the fact that you can play that level period with gloves or without gloves is and is fairly impressive with a helmet on forget it like yeah i when i yeah. play my glasses fall down and then i am you're, just you're derailed. finger staring <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, don't you shame me i'm not i'm not I'm, i do it okay occasionally so i i want to know when you're doing the live shows you're playing music that people are they already are in love with and like there, there is, it seems like just a little bit of difference between this style of music that you guys are playing and the way that an audience normally responds, which you'd, you'd have a mosh pit or, or there might be people that are doing like hardcore dancing or something like that in the middle, just because of the music style, the way that the rhythm section is working together. Yet it seems from watching the live videos that you guys have put out and some of the live show stuff that you've released, 
is that your audience seems a lot more in awe of the fact that you guys are pulling off their favorite Star Wars tunes in this way than they are, you know, let's say at like a, a Dragon Force concert, which is another very, very, very technical band where people on the outskirts are like, oh, no, I'm going to watch the Dragon Force concert. And the people that are sort of like in the center of the stage is like, no, this is great music for me to thrash and punch people to. <laughs> like, it doesn't seem like your audience tends to do to do the latter there. What's that oh, like? They did have somebody response? on stage doing some ska skanking. No, that's true. I saw that. <laughs> that is true. Well, that's kind of the cool thing about our shows that I really like is that, you know, we're on stage playing kind of ridiculous tech, you know, death metal prog metal metal core like you know all kinds of like sub genres of metal like built into these arrangements of star wars music uh but it's not really a traditional metal show at all i mean we have people from ages you know four all the way up to like 70 who attend our show it's usually like a lot of uh, a lot of families will come, they'll bring their kids, uh, you know, we'll get like middle-aged uh, people who are just like old, long-time, you know, fans of Star Wars, uh, a lot of nerd culture and cosplay. Uh, so it's really quite a mixed bag that uh, that we have, which is cool. It's, you know, we usually try to do all-ages events and um, uh, it brings, I think, a lot of people together who wouldn't normally be in a room together and, uh, everyone's very respectful. You know, it's not like if there is any like moshing, it's pretty light and playful, but most of the time everyone's just, you know, having fun and dancing around during the cantina band or, you know, like keeping Death Star beach balls flying in the air and waving their lightsabers around. So it's, uh, kind of a different type of crowd participation than you would normally have at like a traditional metal show. So, so if I were to sum up just like the Star Wars movies, a Galactic Empire show is also family friendly. Absolutely, we try to uh, to really cater to that because uh, I think it's awesome seeing parents bring you know younger kids to these like ridiculous shows that we have, and and we try to really make sure that we keep it keep it family friendly the same way that you know like Lucasfilm or or Disney always has. Because if I was a kid, I would love to go to something like that and uh a hundred percent yeah try to be respectful to parents uh you know and and the kids for that reason at, at the shows where kids are there do they have headphones on because i imagine it's fun visually but it's probably at an audio level that they're not quite ready for yeah um definitely parents uh but most of the time will bring like earplugs or headphones something like that for the kids we, yeah. we did that with my son we went yeah. to go see some metal shows and he loved it but we had you know, we had some this, some range ready headphones. Yeah. This is uh, a type of thing where I could see like all three generations of my family, and like my dad is into it. Yep. My me and my brothers are into it. My brother's six year old it. son has heard a little bit of Galactic Empire, and he's like, "That's like the, from the Lego shows." And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah," because he's like real into Lego Star Wars right now. Yeah. So all of that that's really cool. That the other thing I I wanted to know if you guys are doing right now is are y'all on like the con circuits and tours? Like, have they gotten onto what y'all are doing? Are you making those rounds? That's a yet? good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we've we've, uh, we've played some cons over the years, and uh, we're playing some more coming up. Um. It's kind of just like any other show, you know, we've got a booking agent, they'll just kind of, you know, put out all the feelers and we'll get a lot of requests coming in and we just see what shows make sense and which ones don't. Uh, the cons are a lot of fun. Sometimes we'll actually play at the con itself, uh, but most of the time what we'll end up doing is playing at a venue down the street that's kind of better equipped. Yeah, uh, that has, you know, like a full range sound system and, you know, production and lighting and all that stuff, uh, which is great because when the con ends, at like seven or eight o'clock PM, people are looking for something to do that night. So, you know, we're kind of like the after party. That's, that's sick. I'm, I want to know, have like guitar shows gotten onto y'all yet? Because like the, the Texas international guitar show is happening in DFW this weekend. And there's going to be thousands of people that are there. I know for sure. If I'm like walking around the bluesman vintage and warrior, you know, booths PRS. Yeah. And then I hear, you know, my favorite star, like, you know, duel of the fate starts playing outside. I'm going to say, Hey, I'll, I'll be back in a minute and go and check that stuff out. Have you guys made it to any of the guitar shows or anything like that yet? Or is that an untapped market for you? Nothing specific as that. Uh, but, uh, we always have done a lot of kind of just weird and awesome, like non-traditional shows. Like we've played some corporate events and things like that. Uh, one time we played a minor league hockey game. Uh, we've actually had like some, 
some baseball and some football, uh, you know, requests and things like that, basketball. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll do all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's, it's, that's the cool thing about this band again, you know, is I, I think we didn't end up doing it. It didn't work for one reason or another, but, uh, at one point someone was selling silverware like over in Europe and they like wanted us to like be a part of their event, but like, <laughs> yeah, that's um, pretty awesome. <laughs> Galactic Empire yeah. pairs mm-hmm. with everything. May the fork be with you. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. go. <laughs> Love well, a good pun. Well, Grant, we have loved having you on the show. And Dan, as you well know, we end all of our interviews with a segment that we call Controlled Rowdiness. Yep. <laughs> this is just a series of rapid fire questions, which you can answer with as short or as long an answer as you would like. There are no right answers, but there are several wrong ones. So make sure not to step on any of those landmines. Expect nothing from us by way of reply or response. And to get us started, I'm going to send it over to General Grease. All right, Grant. So, yes. uh, I want to know, should a character similar to Thrawn join your band, what instrument would he be playing? It's a good question. That would probably be a fan favorite. I know a lot of people are really excited about uh, oh, man. Thrawn. Uh, uh, keyboard. Wrong. It's a saxophone. <laughs> ah, okay. Clearly. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> does uh, does Lucasfilm, or do you have any indication that Lucasfilm knows of your existence, and, and what have they said to you so far? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're aware. I know the music department knows about us. They're huge fans. A hundred percent. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Will do you are you do you think it's possible that that I'm going to restart this? One. Okay, here we go. Uh, Boop. Will we ever see a D specialized? release by Lucasfilm of the first three movies of Star Wars? I don't think we will. Do you think that they're altered beyond beyond repair, or you just don't think that we're going to see it? They're not going to release it? Uh, I don't know. I just feel like uh, once the special editions came out, uh, George Lucas decided that's the way he always wanted to see the movie. And uh, he felt like... Uh, he needed to change the timing on Greedo and Han. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I, I just, I just think that it's not going to happen. I think it's something that fans want, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I, I think we can keep making them more special. <laughs> you know, I think let's take another crack at some stuff. I, yeah. I, I think they've been adulterated enough. Um, if, now with 50% more TIE fighters. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. Let's add some more. Yeah. What, it's uh, 2023. Let's what add some of more the ties. upcoming Star Wars series are you most excited about? Oh, that's tough. Uh, I mean, Ahsoka is definitely going to be amazing. The trailer looked incredible. Um, but I mean, I'm also very excited about these other ones that they have coming out. The Acolyte seems very intriguing. I'd love to know more about that. Seeing more, more Sith uh, focused stuff will be awesome. The Mandalorian film that they're working on, uh, or I guess the Mandoverse film. Right. I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah, there's just so much happening. And uh, I feel like for the most part, as long as you have either Dave Filoni or uh, John Favreau at the helm, we're pretty much in good shape. Okay. A Star Destroyer comes out of s- warp speed. Okay. <laughs> And it's Darth Vader. His guitar has been broken. We just mixed Star Wars and Star Trek. Though. Yeah, I know. I know. What's it called? What's it called? What I didn't know that was a trick light question. Speed. Light speed. I'm sorry. Light speed. Yeah. Okay. Restarting again. Uh, what's the name? Of his, what's the name of his Star Destroyer? Uh, yes, you did win. You did. Yeah, win, you won. Right? Yeah, okay. good job. You won. Uh, I'll just go it again. Uh, a Star Destroyer comes out of warp speed. Light speed. <laughs> Dang it. I did it again. <laughs> A Star Destroyer comes out of light speed. It's Darth Vader. Mm-hmm. His guitar has been broken beyond repair. What luthier does he pick from Earth to make him his new guitar? Oh, man. That's tricky. Uh, uh, probably Kiesel because they make a Vader. There you go. So he gets the Vader. He gets the Vader. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Lucasfilm has contacted Galactic Empire. They say, hey, look, we are we want to go in a new direction. We're going to do uh, some fan films, and we need you to write a theme song for your favorite character. Whose theme song are you writing? Um, I mean, my character was always Boba Fett growing up, but I guess he already has a theme song written. Yeah. 
How, so, did, how do you yeah, feel who, about Boba Fett's theme song? Uh, I think it's great. I think Ludwig Granson does an awesome job at uh, creating these new versions of Star Wars that we haven't heard. It's very different. You know, it's very... Uh, he has this interesting way of blending different genres and kind of cultural elements into music that I think is actually uh, very appealing. It, it struck me a little odd the first time I heard it because I'm so used to John Williams Star Wars, but I actually really love what he does with it. Yeah, and you guys actually have a cover of that on the uh, on the new album, which yes. is very cool. What what key and style is Jar Jar Binks's theme song? <laughs> uh, key and style. Um, I guess that would be. Uh, do you already have an answer for this? No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, 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 There's no. no wrong answers to he's, this one. He's waiting. He's waiting for you to tell him saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, gun. So it was style and jo- uh, key. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, Gungan core in Misa Minor. Oh, excellent! Very, very, and I think that's our ender. Yeah, that should be the way to okay. wrap it up. Grant, excellent answer. Been, that was correct. It's been such okay. a pleasure having you on the show, man. Tell our audience where it is that they can find yourself if they want to follow Galactic Empire. Uh, so if you go to galacticempireband.com, that's got our website, all of our tour dates, music video, uh, merchandise, everything you need to see is pretty much on there. Uh, you can also go to our socials. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Right on. The new album, Galactic Empire Special Edition, (laughs) is out on vinyl now. You can pick it up or check it out on Apple Music and Spotify. Grant, thanks so much for being on the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Grant freaking McFarland, Galactic freaking Empire. That was a fun interview, man. Especially coming on the heels of the uh, big announcement that we finally made after the world's longest YouTube short countdown, which you absolutely <laughs> hated, uh, of, uh, of Christian Nerd HQ. So this is our first official Christian Nerd HQ interview release. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, this will be the first one on the network, Galactic Empire. We, what, we what, thought, hey, what a great way to kick it off. What else can we count down? Um, let's do another one well, let's we, do abs by christmas I would, we we can count down to when their shows start in august <laughs> just start that countdown now okay. yeah okay. to their first show something is coming on galactic empire and we'll just put we out a countdown one every day. ab is coming yeah 2025 a couple hundred days 659 days <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. It was it was really cool having listened to their music over the last several years, and I I was telling him off air like we we have a couple of really great Star Wars board game communities in the DFW area mm-hmm. where they get together and they play like the X wing tabletop no, games, well. or they play no you don't, <laughs> or they play uh, Rebellion or Star Wars Legends. There was a lot of Destiny people that played that that tabletop card game for a long time. And the soundtrack to all of those events ended up being from like 2015, 2016 on was all Galactic Empire. After they released their first like big album, we were like, why are we listening to John Williams when we can listen to these guys? And uh, it's, it's so cool now to finally get to talk to him, to watch them go from, hey, we're a group of guys that just released an album to now we're doing our own live shows and, and finally getting... Uh, Blast Beats the Mandalorian. Yeah. Who is a the, ridiculous drummer. Oh, dude. Like, there, there is something about. And, and guys I love his humility off. where he said, I don't remember who he was talking about, but he said, oh, we're not worthy. I was like, no, dude. Yeah, yeah whatever, man. Yeah. Like, they're. Their technical musicianship is insane. Yep. And not only on, on top of that, to realize that, like, there are some interchangeable pieces that you know, hey, I can't do it anymore. And then he just has like another musician that it's of that same caliber. And he's like, yeah, I'll put on a mask and go. That, that is the Put benefit. on a mask and cape and go play shows. Yeah, that, that was yeah. what I thought. That is the benefit of, of you know, owning a studio. Yeah, running a, a studio. studio. Yeah. Is uh, you you do have access to a lot of studio musicians and that, that caliber of musicianship. Yeah, and you were talking about and, what and are, you're right. Who are some of the people that recorded with, with him in his uh, studio? August Burns Red, Everclear. Everclear. Yeah. There's, there's a long list. It's but. not like he's having us come into the studio. <laughs> right. <laughs> some into the studio. These are people that... I brought my own cape. Know, yeah. Hey, you're yeah, not going to yeah, need sorry. it. Sorry. So, so the, just the, the ability to run you know a whole new group of people in and say, hey, these are going to be... The new musicians, I will say the backbone of any type of band like this typically is the drummer. 
that yep. there there are a couple of bands where they're they're very like guitar specific with some of the riffs and stuff that the guitar players can pull off. Dream Theater's one. Uh, you know, we mentioned Dragon Force. They're another one. Yeah, but you've got a drummer uh, out of this world, right? You you have out of this world drummers in both of those bands, but th- in those two groups in particular. Mm-hmm they have to have the guitar player that they have in order to make it work. There's a lot of of prog rock and, and metal bands and things like that where some of the guitar players are kind of interchangeable pieces where it's like, all right, if you can do like this handful of things, we can bring in a new guitar player and we'll be, we'll be fine. And there are enough decent guitar players out there to where you can make things work. Mm-hmm. If they can't do everything that the previous guy did, you can make things work technically. Not only do these guys pull it off flawlessly, but this guy being Grant being the backbone of all of this is just unreal. And it and it started out as kind of a, a fun project for him where he was just playing over the London Symphony Orchestra. I love that story. <laughs> yeah. Is it like it turned into <laughs> him doing that and his you know, one of his I friends was like, in symphony orchestra and I just made it better. I, I do I love that he that. just like casually threw in, Oh, they said I could, we should do the guitar part. So I just, I just played those yeah. like you, he's also got to be an insane yeah. guitar player to he's be able to pull well that rounded. off. And on the one hand, I'm like, wow, that's really humble. And on the second hand, it's like, Hey, listen, jerk. <laughs> Some of us have to work really hard to be able to do one thing. Not just like, Oh, you I know, also I, did I, this. I didn't ask him. I was I curious where that. he studied. His mom's basement, where all of us. Like studied. if he went to Berkeley or you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I if feel he like went it would to be Juilliard, uh, or... and he's talking. Danley's talking about Berkeley, Boston, the Berkeley College of Music, which is uh, yeah. just an insane, insane. Or school UNT that just could have been. It. Yeah, yeah, could have been UNT. Doubtful right down the road because he doesn't play jazz, and they don't like people that. Yeah, but they. You learn jazz. And then you can play. A I don't lot think of so. Other I things. think jazz poisons somebody's mind so much that like they learn jazz and they're like, I can't play <laughs> they say, anything but they jazz. Say, you know, you can actually play any note during any song yeah. whenever you want to. It's like, oh, no, not really. If you play the wrong note once, that's a mistake. If you play it twice, that's jazz. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> Eat a sweat sock. <laughs> so done with <laughs> jazz musicians. I think, especially after having been one, they're like, oh, you Look, don't play stand up bass, you play fender bass. Yeah, if you're like, who calls it fender bass? If it's an electric Victor, bass. If you're Victor Wooten, you can play whatever you want. Yeah. If yeah, you're not, for sure. shut up. Yeah, exactly. Stay in key. Mm, All right, how do we get back on go track? Go somewhere and eat a, <laughs> eat a sweat sock. I love this sweat sock. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You know what that, you you know where that came from? Down. Is a, that's a Garfield line, and watching you eat lasagna so much over oh, the last so couple good. of episodes, that's what I kind of got lasagna. back onto a Garfield kick after you. <laughs> <laughs> watching you Speaking eat lasagna. Of kicks and Odie yeah. off a table. Yeah. Oh, Terrible. Let's poor Odie. On. But uh, Galactic Empire is going back on the road. They're actually talking. We uh, we got the inside scoop that there are some Southern dates. So there are folks who are in and around. You clearly the, are going the, the way Texas, you've been practicing Oklahoma, your accents too. Louisiana, Arkansas area. <laughs> uh, know the that the there are some new There are some new, uh, new shows Wisconsin. that are going to be put up there make sure you check out all this stuff in the show notes check out galacticempireband.com get the new album special edition which i think is a genius name uh download it on spotify apple music and check out their cool new merch that they've got going on if you follow them follow them on instagram you'll find uh some live shows that are being popped up every now and then that they live stream from their instagram channel it's pretty awesome galactic empire check them out in the show notes any last words dan All right, you guys stay hard, keep jamming, and we'll see ya. Hey, I'm Grant from Galactic Empire, and this is why you should never listen to the Reverend and Reprobate.